one of the things that really drew my attention to butterflies was the spectacular colors and the gorgeous patterns of the wings. I started collecting butterflies when I was eight years old and became really fascinated with working on them. My research was in developmental biology. We're really interested in the genes that guide the development of embryos and how they shape the morphology of the organism. And I'd always thought it would be wonderful to do some sort of development research in butterflies. Then I started reading a lot of papers about structural colors in butterflies. Structural color is this light refraction created by really fine patterns of cuticle, the same material that the scale's made of. So if you've ever accidentally rubbed a butterfly, you see this dust-like material come off, and those are the scales. A good example of a structural color is the blue, like you see in the spectacular blue morpho butterflies. Very little is known from the biology side of how the butterfly actually makes these structures. The only two materials that butterflies can work with are chitin, the exoskeleton material that they, they make all of their structures with, spaced by air. And they can blend those two things together to create complex shapes, which then cause light refraction and give the multitude of color that can be created structurally. Our challenge now is that we can only understand so much from looking at these dead scales. So now it's really incumbent upon us to be able to watch this live to ask what's really going on dynamically. In the case of the butterflies, the part of scale development that we're interested in takes maybe about three or four days. What we need to do is compress time. So we photograph these things over and over again, and we might want to take a picture every three minutes, and then we string that together into a movie. We're gonna let the butterfly guide us and tell us how it actually does it. If you want to understand something about how the adult wing is actually being formed, you have to look at the pupa. If you just take and remove the forewing from one of the larvae, what you end up with is a pupa that actually has a window straight into it. When we perform this larval surgery, we set up a little pad that produces CO2. And the CO2 is sort of an anesthetic. The animal falls asleep and won't feel anything. Since we're interested in the forewing, we just count back to the second leg, which is the segment that will have the forewing. There's a little spine right above that. Grab it with the forceps and actually make an incision with the scalpel. And then all we have to do is take our second set of forceps and reach into the incision and sort of pull out the wing. So what you're left with is a caterpillar that's missing a wing, and it will actually heal itself up, and within 10 minutes is right back to eating like nothing ever happened. When the animal pupates, what it has is a little bag that covers the hind wing. We'll set up the camera uh, and just let it run on a time lapse and look at the wing as it's developing. A second technique that Ryan perfected was actually being able to remove the wings from the pupae and then allowing them to grow in a petri dish. Looking at the pupa, you can actually see where the wing is on the surface of the pupa if you look closely. We can then use some very tiny scissors and make a few incisions around the outside of those wings and then actually go in with forceps and just gently tease off the actual wing discs themselves and then we can take and transfer that into a culture media that's specifically for growing the wings and just leave them in there and they'll sit and be happy and grow the color. Combining those two kinds of techniques, we can now really watch scales developing. Well, our challenge now is though that we want to watch these nanostructures being made. In order to have a structural color, those nanostructures have to be smaller than a quarter wavelength of light, so by definition they can't be seen by the light microscope. 
We'd love to understand all the way back at the level of the actual DNA sequences, how that scale physically gets sculpted into these shapes. No one's really ever investigated structural color at a genetic level. And so what we hope to do now is to create transgenic emerald swallowtails. So we can see this cell from the moment that it starts to differentiate all the way through the process of the scale extending and then making those nanostructures. And so in that way, we should be able to hopefully watch in live animals the creation and the sculpting of these structures that are so incredibly tiny. As geneticists, we want to know the genes that are actually responsible for the phenomena that we see. Part of why we work on this is just because it's fascinating. It's the unknown, right? We'd love to know how some biological system can make such exquisitely complex shapes. So I think there's no end to the kinds of things that we might find out by studying structural colors.